Hey guys, it's Dr. Greer. I did a post earlier about general anesthesia versus conscious sedation and which is safer. I, today, let's just talk about the types of anesthesia. So there's local, that's just a shot of numbing medicine. Um, I'll do like upper eye lift in the office under local, mole removal, lipoma removal, things like that. Then there's light sedation. So sometimes I'll do liposuction in the operating room under light sedation. My patients are very awake. They are eyes open, talking the whole time. I give just enough medication to make them feel a little more relaxed. And then we use numbing medicine. And that's what provides the true like pain-free experience. And then there's like monitored anesthesia care, also known as MAC. That is like a deep sedation or a twilight. That's like what you get with a colonoscopy. General anesthesia basically just means we've secured your airway and you're totally out. And a secure airway is either endotracheal tube that goes right into your larynx or a laryngeal mask airway. And that's like this little oval-shaped soft silicone airway that just sits over the back of your throat. But it protects your airway from secretions. And if, you know, they need to paralyze you for a couple minutes, they can bag you through that. Um, paralyzation is not synonymous with anesthesia. We actually don't paralyze people for most cases that I do, other than just briefly to intubate them so their vocal cords relax. Um, for some types of surgery, like if you're doing a laparoscopic appendectomy or cholecystectomy or something, you might need them paralyzed so their muscles are relaxed. For the surgeries I do, I used to need paralysis for breast implants under the muscle because the muscle would get really tight. Now that I do nerve blocks, that relaxes the muscle because it hits the pectoralis nerve. Um, so patients generally aren't paralyzed for any of my surgery, which means if they're getting light, you know, we'll know because they'll move or they'll flinch. People also worry about waking up under general anesthesia. <clears throat> And there's a type of monitor called a BIS monitor. It basically is like a little EEG. It's measuring brain waves to make sure patients are deeply asleep so that that does not happen. And then anesthesia can be administered. So anesthesia itself, basically you're unconscious. There are medications to keep you from having pain and then there are medications to give you amnesia so you don't remember the process. That's basically the components of anesthesia that I remember from med school. Um, and that can be done either with medications through the IV or inhaled gas, like sevoflurane. And for really long cases, <laughs> something outside like a squirrel, for really long cases, that sevoflurane is stored in fatty tissue. So for longer cases, more of that builds up and it takes longer for it to wear off. So a lot of times, what I am at... what my anesthesia team will do is switch over to IV <laughs> anesthesia with propofol closer to the end of the case so that the patient can breathe off all that gas and that so they have like a lot more precision over when the patient wakes up. Please ignore my dog. There are squirrels. If you have questions about what type of anesthesia we do for plastic surgery, throw them in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them.